So this week, Daf Yud Zayin, we're starting from Daf Tez Zayin Amid Dalit, which is the second part of the Mimer Yenasi Bechagve Hasela. And so in the Mimer until this point, we spoke about how the uh, the idea of when this Pasuk is being said is when the Yidden of his Managolos. Um, and to first get into that, he explained how the neshama is really above, only a part of it comes down into the guf. And he spoke about how the way the neshama is lamayla, it's the level of mazel, the level of the uh, yechida of the neshama, and that is kadmala taira comes before taira. And then we have the neshama as it comes down and develops within the person, and that's what he's going to speak about further now in eight phase. He says, yet... The drawing down of Torah from the level of Yisro Shalamayla, which is a level of Mazel, as we said, down here to the level of the Neshama, as it's enclosed in the body, is through an arousal from below and davening, because davening is from the term of connection, like we say, which is which is bonding and the and the and of a soul in its source and the supernal Mazel um, through Usa Deliba, which is love of the heart and the emotion of the heart, with all your heart and with all your soul. He says, because the davening is, as it says in the Pasuk, is the ladder of Yaakov that is standing on the ground, erected on the ground, and it goes up into heaven, its he- head is in the heavens, which that is the idea that it ascends from below to above, that first you have the Pesuk of the Zimra, which they are the, 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 the retelling of the praises of God, of Hashem, to make your heart inflamed with a flame to Hashem. And then afterwards you have the brachas of Yetzer Ar, I'm talking about the angels, they find him who they serve and they search for God with a great commotion until you get to the level of Shema, of Krishna, which there you say Shema Yisrael. And at that point, you reach the which Yisrael are we talking about? We're talking about the supernal Yisrael, which is the Neshama, which is in an ethereal and higher beyond the body manner. And there, Hashem Alekeinu, in other words, there we're totally nullified in our entire existence until Hashem is one in a level of supernal unity, that there's no other existence other than God, and your neshama is only part of that. Because because all the uh, um, 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 divisions and the involvements of many levels are only a ray, a ziv ha'ara, it's only a ray and a shine from Hashem. And even Gan Eden Ha'oyin, the higher Gan Eden, we say tzaddikim, they sit and they enjoy the ray of the Shekhinah. And also it's called Kabbalah's Pras, it's called the reward, which is called a pras, and which is from the word of a part, a little leftover, a little, a little piece, which is something that, so to speak, separated from the essence of Hashem. In other words, it's not revealed that it's the essence of Hashem. Everything's the essence of Hashem. On the other hand, in the level of Ayin, um, which is the, uh, the uh, there you cannot tell that the level of Yesh. Because there's something, therefore, every something has to be separate from something else. But when you're talking the level of the true ayin, which is nothing, so then there's no divisions. There is the true unity, and once you will lay place your heart to all this, you will you will go out of yourself, and you'll desire and your thirst, your, your, your soul will thirst only to Hashem Himself until you come to the fulfillment of the mitzvah of Yehavtas Hashem Alekecha, which is the continuation of the Shema. Meaning, vahafta, you should love. He says from the term of ava, which is a desire and a want, that when you get to a revelation of the heart, and in other words, when your desire and your love comes and it now gets revealed in the heart, then it's called ava with an added hey, not ava, but ahava, and that is the, the desire and the will um, that the Hashem, which is the source of your neshama above, which is the level of tahirahi, which is totally pure at a level of an ayin and nothingness, which is you, you totally unified in its emanator. The Hashem should be what? The desire is elikecha, it should be your power and your, be your strength. It should be revealed within the soul of man that's enclosed in the body, in all your heart, in all your soul, which, we, which means in both your Yitzhah and your Yitzhah, and, your, and, in your, and, uh, and uh, even if he takes your soul, to give up your soul, be'echad. And this is what it says, like what it says, Eilecha Hashem nafshi asa, to, that to you Hashem I uplift my soul, to you specifically. And when you have, that we are trying to reach Hashem himself, then we could have what goes on further in the Shema, Vidibartabam, which means to speak in Torah day and night. But here he translates Vidibarta from the word of Milashen Yadber Amin, to rule and control nations. 
which this is the idea of ruling and drawing something down. In other words, that what does it mean? The Bartabam you'll speak in what? In Torah. Meaning that you'll draw down Torah into this world. In other words, that and when you draw down Torah in this level, that's when you're called a one who is Isaac, involved in Torah for the sake of the Shema. And we know the Shema is for the sake of the Torah itself, meaning so that the, in Torah, there should be the light of Hashem revealing and, and dwelling within it. Why? Because Torah comes from the wisdom of Hashem. And they are so much elevated and, 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 and greater even than Chachma. As we say, Kulam, Chachma sees everything is made with Chachma, which is a physical uh, uh, um, um, action. And as we say, everything is nothing before Hashem. So in other words, to be able to have that the light of Hashem should enclose itself in Chachma, that is through an arousal from below and davening, specifically when you place your heart and you only to Him, then a spirit from you, a wind from you, will draw down from Him, will draw down from Hashem another spirit, and you'll be able to draw down Hashem to be revealed in Torah, which then that Torah will be revealed in the body of the person down here, Lamat. And that's where it says, Lots is called Torah Azai, so you should make all the words of this Torah that the Jewish people, they're the ones who make the Torah, so to speak. And they draw down this revelation onto their soul, which is the light of the soul as it's enclosed in the body. And that's what our rabbi said don't read the words, Banayach el Banayach. It says, anybody who learns Torah, don't read it, Banayach. My sons, rather, but the ones who build, that we build the light, this ray that's enclosed within the body, that it should be re- reside within it and get revealed through it. The drawing down of the unity of the Ain of Baruch Hu through our involvement in Torah. And that's what we say, Kumilach. That, what does it mean, get up to yourself? In other words, to your own essence. In other words, to the level of your Nisham as it is above, that is, you should have a, a cleaving of your soul down here in its source above, and then you'll able to be after that. Because of that, you'll able to be my nurturer. Now, would you be able to be Rayasi, my beloved, my nurturer? That you'll be able to draw down the food, the food of Torah, which this is when Torah is called food. I feel like we said a food, so to speak, is the one that connects and binds the the, the life of the soul to spread throughout the whole body, like bread that you eat which on that your person lives and sustains himself. The same way, it says, that we see that the Torah, that was take your bread to my bread, which is the idea of Torah, which is called bread and sustenance, that through it and with it, you draw down life, a life force from the Abish there, from the Eintzai Baruch Hu, and the enclosing of the light of the Eintzai Baruch in the, in the supernal Chachma of wisdom. And this could only happen when you first have your desire totally to him, as it says, kumilach. So now in this Pasik, kumilach, it's actually, we read it as lach, but the, it's actually written with a yud, lachi, which the words that's written shows on the source of the soul. In other words, the written one is showing the source of the soul, which is the levels of chaf and yud. In other words, to which level are you supposed to go? The hidden, the, the way it's written is telling you to the levels of chaf and yud, which on this through this, you could become the beloved and you could become the sustainer of, of, of Torah down here, and etc. And he says in the bracket, the kaf and the yud goes on the two makif from the two supernal levels of the soul, yechid and chaya, which uh, one is a, it says one, uh, uh, um, called the, um, one uh, shadow, one's called the double shadow, so you have a double. And that's the levels of makif from the surrounding lights and the levels of the nefesh, ruch, and neshama, the lower levels of the soul that are enclosed within the person. Gimel. So now he says that the explanation of this idea of beautiful, which they have the mitzvahs that they're called garments, will understand first from explaining what's the idea of mitzvah, the, the term mitzvah, which why is it called this? Because it's a commandment of the king and it's, it's, it's rule that came out from his uh, 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 words of his kingship. It's a, it's a pasuk from, from, uh, from Miguel Sester. That a, that a, that a, that a a rule in edict came from before him. And so the whole nation has to listen and to follow these rules. So the level of malchus in general is a level of a garment. As it says, bring a garment. Um, it's a, that's also an Esther Yuvila Vosh Malchus. And then it says Hashem wore a, uh, a, 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 a splendorful or, a, or a, an uplifting um, garment, which the main idea of kingship is like a garment, which is idea of being covered which is to cover the body and conceal it that shouldn't be revealed. The same way the level of kingship is that the real revelation of, the, of godliness that will be revealed in the world to come, when it will be 
fulfill, that the glory of Hashem will fill the whole world. It says there that the, uh, the heavens um, and the... Uh, it says that the heavens, if they um, like smoke melt, or they, they they expire like smoke, or the earth that gets um, um, will, will will decompose, so to speak, like a garment. In other words, at that time, Sheikh will come. The heaven and earth, physical ones, will not exist. Rather, there'll be a new heaven, a new earth, which Hashem will say, "I." In other words, "Ani." Hashem Himself will make them, which He says, really, that's the true heaven and earth. So, what do we see now? A heaven and earth that's a physical one because that's from the word oilam which oilam world from the word of concealment and this concealment is from what how what creates this concealment the level of kingship of hashem why because it must be to be able to be a king you have to have a nation a nation meaning from the term of am as he uses here which am is from the term of 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 Oymimus, which is in other places in Chassidus, which means a diminished meaning something distant something uh different than the king himself the says to be able to have something distant has to be concealment and therefore, God concealed the revelation of his godliness, that it shouldn't be in a revealed way. And we should see a heaven and an earth that's physical. And all those who reside in it, physical. And that's for what reason? So his name and his kingship should be called upon them. And what causes this is, what causes that should be a garment of kingship is the mitzvahs. That through the mitzvahs of the king that we fulfill down here in this world, we draw down from above a more beautiful garment of his kingship. And that's where it says, Yafti, that we make the beautiful garments to, for Hashem. And it says, Hoidva, Hoidva Hazel So then he says, Look into, that he says that the level of Malchus is called a garment, and that which Hashem has drawn down to be the king of the world is through mitzvahs. And look in the Maimon Shashak Dimu, which he says with regard to doing his word. The word usually refers to Malchus, which is a level of garments. And he gives a few other mamarim, and he says also explained about the union of the garments of the soul from the mitzvahs, that it comes from mitzvahs in the Pasuk Vela Mishpatim, about, uh, and also in Loi Siyam HaShekela, Malay. And there he says that every person um, has every single day and every moment he has to, is given to him to make one garment in that moment for um, to be able to receive the godly light later, and so this is Avram Avinu who fulfilled every moment of his with another garment. And looking also in the Mimer of Chayasara, of and on many other places. So he says, but to draw down this level of garment, first you have to have and then introduce that which it says again, Kumilach, Ulchi, in other words, the same read or as it's written or as it's said, which is to the level of the Kafin Yud, like we said before, that it should be that two. To you, Hashem, do I uplift my soul. And as it says, the Pusik says um, that I'll clo close the heaven with blackness, um, which what does Shemaim here refer to? Um, fire and water, which they are the Midas. As we know, the, the attributes of kindness is water, which is the right side. In other words, that they get enclosed within the actions of mitzvahs. And there's, so that's the way it is, we said before, that through the mitzvahs we make the garment of the king. But now there's also an opposite of this, that it could be kadrush and darkness, that, that it says that I am b'say chagayla, that I go into, that Hashem himself could get drawn into the exile. That what? That it gets drawn into, give life force and, and, and sustenance to the other side and the evil, fitrachra, which is the opposite of holiness. Which in the level of holiness, what happens is when there's a revelation of holiness and it's revealed in a, in a, in a positive way, in other words, there's a direct result. So then whatever gets receives it has more fear and, and accepts the yoke of heaven. On the other hand, on the other side, it's the opposite that because it's hidden within them and it's not revealed, so when there's the, even when the godliness comes down into them, what does it bring about? Or what happens? There becomes a throwing off the yoke of heaven that they then they destroy the base of Megdash. So look in Zayar, and it brings a whole bunch of places from Zayar, and look about the uh, and other places here, um, etc. So he said, now a spirit draws a spirit, etc., brings a spirit, and draws a spirit that if you place your heart to Hashem, that's what it accomplishes. In other words, when a person 
um, is accepts upon himself the yoke of heaven, then he's able to draw things down. On the other hand, when there's a throwing off the yoke of heaven, even if you fulfill, the, fulfill all mitzvahs, you won't uh, draw anything, you won't reveal anything. And that's what it says, Hashem, Kedishan of mitzvahs, we make a brach, we say, Hashem, you call it us with your mitzvahs. And you commanded us, what does that mean? That you holied us with the your supernal holiness, and you commanded us, meaning you connected us to this mitzvah. And in other words, through, with, with this washing of the hands, or the putting on of tefillin, or such things that we become one with them in a total nullification and a, and a, and a, and a acceptance of the yoke of heaven, which that is what, through what? Kumi lachta, we get up to Hashem. And that's what it means, that the meaning of the blessing, that we form mitzvah, we say baruch, that we draw down, that God, who's revealed in the level of Yudke Vavke, should come down, become a likenu, in other words, which is the level of Torah, which is the, our strength and our, tower, and our power, the inner limbs, and then ultimately Melech Ha'ilam, as the king of the world, which is in the action of mitzvahs, which they are the garments, and the different limbs, the external limbs, that through the mitzvahs we draw down this garment, that God should be the king of the world, and that is what we said, Asher Kedishonu B'mitzvahisav, that you hold it us through your mitzvahs. So the, the way that we draw down, that God should be revealed in the garments of kingship, is through us doing mitzvahs down here. So he says that all these levels are spoken about in the time of the Exodus of Egypt, and these Jewish people were in a level of they went after Hashem into the desert, and it says, midbar, that at this level it says, get up, that you'll become my beautiful and my beloved. But in the time that the Bismillah does not stand, there it says, Yunasi Asela, that the Maidav is in the cliffs, clefts of the, of the rock, in the hidden levels, that when the dove is in these clefts of the rock, in other words, it's between these cracks within the, within the stone, so it can't spread its wings to fly, because the, 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 the wings get caught up, and they get stuck there, stuck there. The same way at the time of exile, the wings which are our love and fear for Hashem, which without fear, love and fear, one cannot fly above. In other words, they get stuck, and they get caught in this uh, uh, um, dirt, or this uh, uh, um, plaster of the body, of the physical body, that with, 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 within which the soul is enclosed, and you get drawn after the worries of 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 parnasa, of of, uh, of, uh, of 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 sustenance and work, which is the idea of the shibud hagol malchias that you're um, under the oppression of kingship, and you're in the exile. And look at what it says in the pasuk in Maim Rabbim about Meinoyach, which over there he speaks about the tagus of parnasa and the fact that in Golos we have it's not only about uh, um, how much taxes we pay, but it's more about the fact the worry that we don't know each day where it's going to come from, etc., and, and, and how much we're involved in it. And this is the, 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 the great waters, the Shibud HaGolos, and Dagas HaPranasa. And it doesn't allow us to become close to Hashem. So there he also explains that specifically because of that, in that distance, we're able to reach even a higher level, which he's now going to speak about soon in the idea of Truv as well. So what does it mean in the hidden levels? Meaning that where is the, rev- the love and the fear? It's only, not in the revealed part of the heart, it's only in your natural love, which is hidden and clothed within this um, garment of cloth, of sackcloth, as explained in other places. So what's the idea? What do you do now? So that's Harenias Marayach, you can show me your face. Which here it says, Marayach also can mean a mirror. And the idea is, no, we show me your image. That the Jewish people we find are called a mirror in the verse, Maris Kim, where it says, I will show myself to him in a mirror. Which that is, the idea of a mirror is like when someone shows the, the, the vision of what you're thinking, looking into, because it is, um, um, it has a, 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 uh, a fine covering of silver, as it's known, therefore it makes it into a mirror, makes a glass into a mirror. And instead of seeing through, you see a reflection. And therefore, it blocks the sight of the eye, that what you see, you don't see from one side to the other, like in a glass, but rather it, it, it transforms it, and now you see what you, you, yourself, in other words, you see backwards. It reflects it back to you. And that's only when it's covered with a very thin covering, like something that's refined, like silver. But when it's with a very thick covering, then you won't see anything through the glass. And it blocks any type of sight whatsoever. And the same with the Jewish people are called a mara, are called a mirror. Why? Because this descent, that they come down into the body, into the shaman comes into the body, is to actually ascend, to go back up from below to above, to become one and infused within the light of Hashem, and to cleave to Hashem through this descent. Just like the, the example of the light of the sun, that when it falls on the earth, that it then hits it with strength and it actually reflects back light. And that's why we find that the warmest um, sun, the warmest of air is that which is closest to the earth, as it's known.
But that is when the soul is not enclosed in the body in, in, in a way that it's totally involved, only it's in the ways of things of the world that are permissible that he needs. But if the soul actually becomes defiled, and it goes down into the three evil clippers, in other words, it has some type of sin or etc., then it becomes caught and tied down in them, and it's not able to ascend. And it had, therefore it has to have tshuva to arouse great mercy on the fact that the soul, that the spirit, that the, this spark of the soul came down in such a low place. And that's what it says the dove, as it is in the, in the clefts of the rock, that there it's caught up and it's stuck in these in these cracks of the rocks, and it's not able to arouse its love and fear to go up. So what is the uh, advice that's given? Is Haranius Maraich that you should look, remember and take to heart how you're only a mirror that you came down only to ascend back. And through this, you will arouse a great mercy on the fact that your spark of your soul came down into from the great mountain into this lowly valley, and you'll scream out to Hashem in your pain. And through this, you'll you'll arouse from above to below your sweet voice and your and your and your and that your image is beautiful. Which what is idea of the voice? That's the idea of drawing down tighter that it'll be in a sweet and a in a in a beautiful way because in a place that probably truva the one who does truva and returns to Hashem stand even the greatest tzaddikim are not able to stand there because they draw and they pull to God in a much greater strength and fervor. And that's what it says, that your mirror is beautiful. In other words, your image is beautiful. This is the mitzvahs, which they are beautiful, that they, that not only is the Torah beautiful, but your mitzvahs also become beautiful. And it'll be, as it says, even more beautiful. It says, tshuva maizim toivim. And here's the translation, that when you have actions that come from tshuva, that through the tshuva, your actions become even greater and beautiful, more beautiful, that they shine, as it says, ha'ar ki toiv, the light that was good. In other words, when it came from the place that it was hidden, and then it shines. It's much, much more beautiful. And look in this idea of Yonis B'chag B'Yasela and from the Zayar, Pasha Slach, Achrei, and look at the difference between um, the difference between show me your image, which is the idea of a mirror, which is a reflecting light, to the level of getting up and going straight to Hashem, which we spoke about before in the Mimer, which is also an ascent from below to above, that you should have your soul totally cleaving in its source above. So we could say that the difference is when you go up, so to speak, the first phase in the order of the levels from below to above, which is the level of tzaddikim that go before God from one level to another, almost similar to the idea of when we left Egypt, that even though there's 49 days and we're going up step by step, yet it's a level of tzaddikim. But when the Jewish people are in the hidden levels, then this level of ascent is through screaming out to Hashem when they're in pain, which that's the idea of tshuva, which is much more strong, which is much, uh, which is strengthened and much deeper. As it's known that tshuva is not only on a Vedas, but it's also on from being far from Hashem. And so look uh, in the Mimer of Shuvah Yisrael at the level of Yaakov, um, does it, uh, oh, sorry, Yaakov said according to the order of the levels, and but the order of tshuva is not in the order of the evolved worlds, but in a whole jumping in a higher way. And look also in Elamase, look in the example of the water when it flows, that when you have something blocking the water and holding back its flow, so then with strength it breaks through, and then you have a current that happens because of the thing that's holding it back, and therefore it starts flowing at a much faster and stronger way. And the same way we understand the idea of showing me your, 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 your image, in other words, in a way of a mirror, that it's a, a, stronger, uh, a stronger current. And uh, you can look in other places, in the Pasuk B'kash the Risham, that when we come specifically from the place that's there and far away, it becomes much deeper. And then also look in other places about this, and that's where the Mimer ends. And then we will do the Mimer also of the beer in the next uh, piece. So now we begin the Mimer of the beer, the explanation on the Pasuk, Yunasi B'chag V'hasela. So the Alter Rebbe begins, it says that my thoughts... The Ibasha says, My thoughts are not like yours. So it explains in other places that it's understood according to the simple reason. Isn't that a simple thing that the Ibishta's thought is so much beyond the realm of our thought, as we are in a body to God's thought that he has no uh, comparison to a body, no form of a body, and he's not a body, heaven forbid. So so he says the idea is that we see by a person that his thinking or his thoughts doesn't do anything. Because the mahshava, the thought is called a river. As it's unknown in the Pasik that a river comes out from Aden, Aden is called Chachman, and the Nar, the river that flows from there, it goes on the level of Bina, which is also a level of Machshava thought. Which, just like a, a river, it flows from its source and it's always going and it never stops 
and never, uh, uh, um, it never stops flowing. The same way the thought is always thinking, it's always flowing at all times from its source in the intellect, and it never rests, even for a moment. You always are going to move from one thought to another, it's something you're going to think about. But yet, it doesn't accomplish anything that we could actually recognize, and it doesn't make any impact at all, like a speech or action that actually make an impact. So for example, that person will think in his thought to make or to create something uh, of existence. So whatever it might be, his thought will not accomplish anything. And even if he'll imagine it and he'll picture it in his, in his, in his mind, the exact uh, uh, form of what he wants that he, that he, to, to create, still it'll be like nothing until he'll go out and he'll do something about it. Through what? Through his power of action specifically or sp- through speak, speaking that he could command somebody else to do it. So it comes out that the thought has no power to accomplish or do anything like speech or action because the main action or the main um, uh, effect is only through action specifically or through speech. And that's why we say down here that thought doesn't do anything because the thought is a level of I and of nothingness in comparison to thought and sp- to, to speech and action which they are, yes, they are something and they're the main thing as we'll see soon. But that's not the way it is above in the thought of Hashem, because the thought of Hashem specifically is a thing that makes everything, and it is the thing. It is yesh. It is the existence. Because when it came up, up in the thought of Hashem and his desire to create and to make and to emanate the world of Atzillus, so then it happened. It immediately emanated, and it happened. It, um, it was created mamish through this thought. As explained all this in Pardis, and look over there also about this in the Maimur Tiku Bachayish. And the opposite is true. It's over there, in, by God, it's the opposite. That the creation of existence through thought is much greater in, in, and in level and in stature than the existence that happens and created through speech. Why? Because it's known from the idea that he, God sits, sorry, sits that, he, that he looks and he sees throughout all the day, generations in one thought. In other words, there, when he sees all the generations in one thought, it's something that's higher than the realms of space and time. Many means are time. And it says in the Zayar that in this one thought, all the worlds were created, meaning the world of Atzillus, Bri, Yitzir, Asiya, all the four worlds, and also the revival of the dead, and the 7,000th year, and all the ascensions that will happen. It's all within this thought, which we are all created from. But, no, it's in there, it's all in one thought. One thing makes it all. It includes it all. But when the sustenance comes down in the world and into the speech, then it gets contracted. The light gets contracted in a in a in a in a in a condensed and one condensed sensation after another. That it gets divided and and made into particles until you're able to have a level of time that you have months and of years, months and days, as explained in Sefer Shabbatim and Shai Yichud Vamuna, a part, a cha, a part which is. Uh, Tanya part two, chapter seven, that the whole creation of time is only from the level of Malchus, which is a supernal speech, that in speech you get time. But in the supernal um, attributes of Atzillus that are higher than speech, it says like a thousand years are like yesterday. In other words, that all thousand years are like one moment, one day. And then if you go even higher, which is in the level of Bina, which is the law, it's even higher than that level of time also, because there he sees all generations in one moment. In other words, not just... The whole 7,000 years is in one moment. So to understand from this that, 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 that the main ex- 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 creation above is from the specific level of thought until the entire existence, when it came up in his mind, in his thought, and it got created there, because of that it has, sorry, when that happens, it has a much stronger life force and light when the, as it is created and it comes about when it comes through speech which it, it's in the world of Briyat Tzernasi. In other words, the condensation also means the force of power and energy of godliness that's in them is less when it comes from speech versus thought. Because that which is drawn and created through speech has already descended and gone through the levels of time. On the other hand, that which in the level of thought is all higher than all this. And look in this Mimer of Ner uh, about Mezuzah, um, which it also explains that idea here. How the main creation is through the level of that everything Hashem desired became. In other words, there's a level of God creating. He desired and it was. And that's a much higher level than the level of speech. And so that which there had to be afterwards a statement and there had to be the ten utterances and the speech of Hashem that we should be things of self. Um, if that's when we should become things of self and are more condensed and more divided, etc. And something lower. 
So this is what he says, that my thought's not your thought. The Abisha says that in the physical person, we see that his thought is considered like nothing. That nothing comes from it. And you can't make anything from it because how refined it is. And that which, and when it, the more it, 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 it becomes coarse to a level of speech or action, then it becomes more something. And then you're able to get something from it, make something from it. But the attribute of God is not this way because he is the one that surrounds all the worlds, which he is, the, that is the main existence. And there's nothing other than him. And that which comes and gets spread throughout the worlds, the higher ones and then the lower ones, is the more lower it comes, the more nothing it is because everything is nullified before Hashem and everything is before him like nothing. And therefore, the same way also is an idea of thought and speech of his. May he be blessed that they are the light and the spreading of his godliness. May it be blessed. is so that the thought, which is the level of something, existence, on this it says that I will give an inheritance to those who love me of yesh, of existence, being the revelation of God's thought. And from there is the main creation until the speech is considered like nothing, as everything is nothing compared to this thought. And look about this in what it says, and look also in other places in this idea of everything Hashem wants, He made, and but also says that with the word of Hashem, He made the heaven. And so here also we see that the main creation happened from the desire of Hashem and His supernal desire, which that's the level of thought. And then there's actually the lower levels of speech that are a drawing down and a revelation in a more de- detailed and a more um, 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 a broken or a more... Uh, um, um, individualized way for each thing to become more uh, it's of self, but ultimately that's less self. It's more nullified and it's more nothing before Hashem and we'll continue in the next ice next week.